Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. Hi, uh, from cheater surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. <laughs> Right. No other woman has made me feel the way she does. You don't do this to the people that love you. I can live with the truth, but I can't live with lies. I'm lost. I feel like I'm by myself. This is not the way we're supposed to end. I will get to the truth. No, this isn't easy. I can't take it anymore. I knew something was going down. Though. This has been a lie the whole time. Oh, that's a hell of a Oh, hell no. Here we go. I see you right there. I want a hard target search. Is this what you call me? Real reality television has brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on cheaters. I'm Joey Greco. Thanks for watching this illuminating presentation of Cheaters. Mike Collins is a man concerned about his girlfriend's fleeting affections. With questions mounting, Mike turns to the professionals at Cheaters for answers. Mike Collins, age 27. A bartender worried that his girlfriend might be serving up samples of herself to other men. Me and Sarah have been living together a little less than a year, uh, I would say. And uh, it's really a dream come true uh, to have her there all the time, uh, to have her in my life all the time. She knows my mom and my dad went through a messy divorce. My, my dad actually cheated on my mom. Um, and I had, to, you know, I had to go through that. And she knows how scared I am of being cheated on, how scared I am of, uh, of losing her that way or, or even having to deal with that again. I mean, I want to get married once and one time only. Lately, I've been uh, pretty suspicious about things. I mean, um, we don't talk like we used to. We don't laugh like we used to. It's, it, you know, when I try to touch her, or, or she, she, it's almost like she pulls away, which is weird. I, um, you know, I just want things to be like they were, and I'm not really exactly sure why, why things have changed. I could not take her back if she was cheating. I, I've been through too much in my life. I would rather I'd go it alone. I would, uh, man, I'd, I'd have to be the road warrior after that because, uh, you know, she knows what I've gone through and, and she knows. And, and if there's one thing we've discussed, it's that that's the one that can, thing that can never happen. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Sarah Fredrickson, age 25, an unemployed woman alleged to be using her free time to brush up on her seduction skills. Investigation day three, detectives on duty, fully educated on the particulars of the case, finally catch a break as they spy suspect Sarah Fredrickson leaving the apartment she shares with Mike and entering her car. Once on the road, mobile trackers follow Fredrickson south to a self-storage facility. She leaves her car running while darting into her storage unit. Not one minute later, Mike's girlfriend returns with a suitcase in hand. Fredrickson heaves her luggage into the trunk of her car and is soon burning rubber toward her next destination. A few clicks away, she pulls into an apartment complex, parks, and struggles with her suitcase into a residence out of the detective's line of sight. Expecting a longer stay, P.I.s are startled to see Fredrickson emerge just an hour later with suitcase. She returns to her storage unit, unloads her cargo, and returns home. Investigation day five. 
Cheater's operatives keep their cameras trained on Fredrickson as she leaves her storage unit with the suitcase secure in her trunk. She arrives home and unloads her car. As she slips inside, the internal surveillance cameras placed by Mike whirl to life, capturing the suspect, setting up a table in the middle of the room. Meanwhile, the exterior surveillance team takes notice of an unknown male outside of Fredrickson's door, nervously pacing. Having kept him waiting long enough, the suspect greets her visitor and ushers him inside. Her companion apparently wants to get a little more comfortable as he sheds his clothes while they chat. Fredrickson pulls out some oils from her mysterious suitcase as her new friend wraps himself in a towel and lies on the table. The suspect begins to massage her man on the makeshift table. The happy client flips over while Fredrickson is careful not to get any oils on her shirt. Apparently, the untrained masseuse starts to improvise a new technique, giving her patient a more enjoyable session. Once the hour's up, Fredrickson's companion puts on his clothes and pulls a wad of cash from his jeans. The unknown John hands over the money and is ready to leave, but can't resist one quick tap on his date's rear end. As he leaves the apartment, the suspect begins to clean the house of all incriminating evidence, happily ending this day of investigation. Investigation Day 9. With more questions to be answered, mobile units follow the suspect to a local nightclub. Inside, Fredrickson waits patiently for someone to arrive. Twelve minutes pass before Chance Harper, the beneficiary from their previous encounter, saunters up to the table and slides in beside her. Harper gently kisses his date hello before the seemingly uncomfortable Fredrickson excuses herself for a trip to the powder room. Harper takes the opportunity for some last-minute grooming, paying a little extra attention to his nostrils. While her date waits, Fredrickson plays a trick on Mike in this recorded phone call. Having decided to take things to a more private location, the suspect and her companion make their way to a motel room. With the girlfriend experience in full swing, agents head back to headquarters to finalize their report. Coming up, the confrontation. the suspect's dark deeds out in the open, Cheater supplies Mike with the in-depth details. Though stoic in the face of the truth, Mike steadies himself to view the footage. Mike, thanks for being with us tonight. I'm not going to take any more time. Our detectives have gathered information that I think may provide some answers to the questions that you have. Okay. I'm just gonna play it and explain what we see as we go through. Earlier in this investigation, we had you place some hidden cameras inside. Inside, Sarah takes one of the tables, cleans it off, she covers it with a tablecloth, but our detective on the outside captured a gentleman who arrived. He waits outside for a few moments and now we see Sarah go out and greet this gentleman. Once inside, he begins to disrobe, lies down on this makeshift table, and she gives him a massage of sorts. As this session continues, we see a moment where Sarah removes her top she continues 
to massage this gentleman, and I don't need to explain. Are you gonna be alright? Uh, I can understand. You provided our technology department with a disc, a copy of what what Sarah had on her hard drive. Yeah. Have you ever seen this advertisement? You found this on the, on the computer? We found some emails that had been deleted that led us to this information when we did a thorough search. I swear, uh, this is... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Take all the time you need. What we've done, based on the information from her advertisement, we've scheduled an appointment. No. My question for you at this point is, do you want to continue? Yes, I need, I have to see her. I have to, I have to, I have to see her. I have to hear this from her. I, I, I need, I need to go. Okay, then come with me and we'll go do that. Yeah, okay, let's go. Let's do this. I need to go. or something? Was he paying by a credit card? Mike, 
Don't talk to me. Please. Go. Go away from me. Don't ever talk to me again. I don't ever want to see you again. You're done. I never, I Get never had sex out with any of, of them. Here. We never I did saw anything. you on footage. I saw footage. I saw it in our house. I know, but here's the problem. And we found this on Craigslist. Hey, Summer, I got money for you. An hour body to body 140. Can you explain that? This, this can't. Stop. It's not. We oh, are done. Like I don't this. know what you don't get about that. Hey, you want your money, right? There you go. Are you gonna keep the change? Is he giving her money right now? Yeah, I am. Oh, nice. Come on now. Are you gonna do something? All right, I let you off the hook. You didn't know she had a boyfriend. Oh, what are you gonna do, boss? Swear to God. Oh, my car. My car, right? Get the out of my car. Get the out of my car. Get the out of my car. Get off me. Get off me. Mike is understandably baffled on how this came to pass. Later in the show, we'll report on how he's coping. But first, Lynn Davidson makes time to explain how cheating on Portia Ellis was an acceptable life choice. Lynn Davidson, age 29. Lynn summons the fortitude and comes clean about his dirty dealings with his girlfriend. I was told that she was going to call him plenty of times before, but I really wasn't expecting it to really happen. So I was just in shock, and I ran away. And that's when she put the handcuffs on me. And I was really like, what you doing or whatever? And it, it, it kind of pissed me off even more. It made me feel like she was really just losing her damn mind or whatever. Who the is this? Who is this? Who is you? Who is you? Who is you? He's staying with me. separated for a few months. A couple of weeks ago, she called me and told me she was pregnant. So I started just thinking about it or whatever, and I just realized it was a second chance, and we, uh, we kind of, we're trying to work it out a little bit now. You talking about chances, So it wasn't your own hair. Should I get this? Do you think she wants that? Is it reusable? It's going to be a lot of people out there that's going to be talking down and hating and don't know what the, what, the, what the hell really happened or what the hell was really going on. But I'm just going to stay focused and do the right thing and do everything I can for me and my girl to be on the right path. the shock of his girlfriend's treachery, Mike Collins is unsure which path to take. He says, I love Sarah. That's why it's so hard to say it's over. But how can I kiss her knowing what she's been doing with that mouth? Regarding Sarah Fredrickson, she claims to be ashamed of what she's done. She says that she was broke and scared, and she started to spiral out of control. Chance Harper feels he did nothing wrong, he says, I'm single, I'm successful, and Summer, or Sarah, was a great way to relieve stress. And she was worth every penny.
remember, if you don't get your programming from Goldstein's, why we'll both lose money. Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. I can't believe it, Master. They're at the theater. Oh, is this it? Oh, hell no, Marcus, what the f***? You gonna throw a year down a drain over this? I've been with him for two years. From Cheaters surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. You can feel in your heart when something's not right. No other woman has made me feel the way she does. You don't do this to the people that love you. I can live with the truth, but I can't live with lies. I'm lost. I feel like I'm by myself. This is not the way you're supposed to end. I will get to the truth. I know this isn't easy. I can't take it anymore. I knew something was going down. This has been a lie the whole time. I'm about to throw up. Here we go. I see you right there. I want a hard target search. Is this what you thought you need to with your guard? Here he is. Get your hands on me! Get the camera off your... You need to be baptized! Calm down! Knock that off. I'll you the face! This is the price of justice. This is, like, not how this is supposed Where to work, Just go. Done. Go with him. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Don't you love me? Real reality television has brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on Cheaters. I'm Joey Greco. Thanks for watching this profound presentation of Cheaters. Mary Jameson is a young woman whose love for her boyfriend is no longer being reciprocated. Mary asks Cheaters to step in to uncover the secrets he's keeping. Mary Jameson, age 23, an insurance salesperson concerned that her boyfriend may have raised his premium. We we'll spent a lot of time together, and all of a sudden, that doesn't happen anymore. I call him, I would say probably about after 10 o'clock. For some reason, I don't get an answer. I asked him about it. He claims, because he stays by late, that the signal fades or is something wrong with the network. But I think this book... I mean, he used to pay me a lot of attention, tell me how pretty I was and how good I looked and, and different things like that, that that went on for about six to nine months and all of a sudden is he doesn't do it anymore. Um, he kind of blames it on me. He says it's my fault or he'll tell me um, I'm tripping, that basically I'm just acting, acting a fool over nothing when I know it's more to it. And if he's over my house, the phone would ring late at night around 3 or 4, and I would ask him who would be calling. And he would tell me, oh, that person had the wrong number or just some blame-ass excuse. It pisses me off. I mean, because, like I said, I don't have time to waste. And it pisses me off that he would even try and do anything or anybody would do anything like that because it's not right. And he wouldn't want me cheating on him, and if I cheated on him, he probably couldn't handle it. Yeah, I mean, I deserve, I deserve the best. I am, I feel like... You know, I'm a good woman, and I deserve somebody that's good and that's going to treat me right. And if that can't be him, then he needs to just step aside. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Marcus Street, age 27. A restaurant manager suspected of serving the food of love to another woman. Investigation day two. With their assignment set, detectives keep watch on the residence of Mary's boyfriend. Alert for any movement, investigators soon spot the suspect, Marcus Street, as he makes his way toward his vehicle. Once in the car's cockpit, Street makes waves down the road. Mobile units track his movements to an unknown apartment complex. Street stops in the middle of the parking lot and waits. Soon, the figure of an unknown female is silhouetted approaching the car. She jumps into the passenger seat and the plus-size duo depart. 
They're on the road for quite a while before they turn down a residential street and come to rest at an unknown house. The couple enter and stay for the better part of two hours. Upon exiting their hideaway, they trek back to the companion's apartment where they share a kiss before calling it a night. Investigation Day 5. Detectives on watch calmly wait for any sign of the suspect. Shortly after dark, Street emerges from his house, dressed for his shift at a fast food taco restaurant. He hops into his car and is off. He follows a familiar path to the apartment complex from previous surveillance. Waiting by the curb is the curvy female whose identity remains withheld. They kiss hello and surprise detectives by switching seat assignments. With his companion behind the wheel, Street relaxes in the passenger seat and is driven to his place of employment. He says a quick goodbye to his traveling companion and heads into work. His accomplice in deception drives his car away. Investigation Day 10. Cheaters operatives again set up shop outside Street's humble abode. They get a peek at the suspect as he leaves his home and enters his car. This smooth operator heaps a mountain of lies on his trusting girlfriend, Mary, in this recorded phone call. are able to see before the lights go out. With enough evidence of the suspect's covert conduct, detectives prepare to make the call to Mary. Coming up, the confrontation. With more than enough evidence proving Marcus's guilt, Cheaters prepares his file for Mary's review. Eager for her heartache to end, Mary joins with Cheaters to view the unpleasant revelation. Mary, thanks for being with us tonight. I know you contacted the show because you had some questions about what was happening in your relationship with Marcus. Yes. Correct. We're a little pressed for time right now. I'm just gonna get right into the information that our detectives have. Okay. Are you ready to see it? Yes. Mary, as our investigation began, our detectives were outside of Marcus's apartment. He leaves, gets in his car, and was followed to another apartment complex. Once there, he picks up a young lady the two of them get into his car. They go to a third location, which was another residence, which is where they stayed for a large portion of the evening. After some time, they exit. He brings this young lady back to her apartment. There's a brief kiss. She gets out, goes inside, and he returns home. Now on this evening, we were again outside of his place. He was there when Marcus arrived, gets out of his car, goes inside. A short time later, he emerges and was followed until he once again returned to the same young lady's apartment complex. On this evening, he parked his car went inside and remained there for the rest of the evening. My son of a bitch. We've been able to confirm that he's been letting this young lady use his car. She's been driving I don't him even off. drive his car. Well, she's been dropping him off at work and then picks him back up later in the evening when his shift is through. 
I'm going to call Gomez right now and see if he can give me an update on where they are and what's been taking place tonight. Okay? Okay. Gomez, what's happening? Okay, yeah. They're at the theater? Well, we're on our way right there. There it is right there. Okay, we see it. We're on our way there now. Everybody out, everybody out, everybody out. <laughs> Guys, get out. Hang on. I know. And we're just moving so they can get out. It ain't over. For you and that bitch, it ain't over. 
searches her soul to understand how she could have been so wrong. At the end of this program, we'll update you on her progress. But first, Cheaters gives Lynette Nadell's former boyfriend a chance to tell his side of the story from his own unique perspective. Suspect's identity withheld, age 56. The suspect sits down to explain the blueprint of his former relationship with Lynette Nadell. It was embarrassing for her to even, I couldn't believe she'd do that to start with. I mean, all these people show up on my property. Well, I've got a, a client there trying to rent the house to them, and everybody shows up there and made me look bad. I was busted. Uh, Lynette and I had been having problems, and I, I felt like we were over. I just hadn't ended it yet. We still had some issues that work out that I wasn't willing to work out, and I moved on. What is this? What are you? I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters, and Lynette hired us. What are you, what are you doing? I feel like I'm being honest with you. I'm the property. I told you I had a client over here. And who is this? A friend. Hi. Hi. You may not know it, but he and I have been dating for six months. I'm the one that bought him his pickup truck. It's been over for a while. You just, we just hadn't, it just hadn't well, why did We had been going, we went separate ways. We, we still seen each other. But it wasn't what she thought it was. We'd grown apart to where there was issues that couldn't be resolved. We still saw each other, but she thought there was a whole lot more there than what was. So I'd, I'd moved on. I found another girl that I was dating. We just hadn't ended it between her and I yet. No, nah, he's not going to come out. He's not going to come out. Yeah. All right, guys. All right. Let's go. Okay. Watch your step. This other young lady. Let me see if I can. She's yeah. back here. Could you help her and make sure she, Linda, doesn't trip on anything? I'm sorry, what was your name? And how long had you been seeing this man? What's up, down here? I told y'all to get the out of here. I had to go. It's private property. Get the out of here. Life goes on. I mean, you know, it's things are going to happen. You, I've been married twice in the past, and things just don't work out like they used to. The leading cause of divorce is marriage, so. Just gotta keep going and hope that one day I'll find that right person out there that I that I can stay with and, and she can stay with me and we'll be able to work through all the hard times and the good times. Mary Jameson is in awe regarding her ex-boyfriend. She can't believe that Marcus would choose a larger white woman over her. She states, I'm hot, and I have a line around the block of men who want to be with me. I chose him, and this is how he repays me? 
this ain't over yet. For his part, Marcus Street claims that you can't help whom you fall in love with, and his companion has always been the one. He regrets not ending his relationship with Mary sooner and wants to offer her a heartfelt apology. Street's companion would not return calls from Cheater's producers. <laughs> that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. He showed up. He brought some takeout. Hey, guys. You're supposed to be... I'm supposed to be working. I'm working. Hey, Tony, by the way. From Cheaters surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. You can episode of Cheaters. Tony Painter is a Cheaters crew member worried about his girlfriend's fidelity with her actions not coinciding with her words. Tony asks for help from his friends at Cheaters. Tony Painter, age 33, a Cheaters crew member concerned that his fiance's activities might force him to bring work home. Live together. Uh, we share an apartment together. Uh, we've lived together for about a year, um, and it's been great. Um, we definitely see things very similarly. Uh, we're both very clean, very organized people. Um, was working uh, previous job. She really didn't uh, didn't like it much. wasn't getting paid well. Of course, I work here as a security guard for cheaters, um, and you know, I do I do okay. So I you know told her to quit her job. Um, I've been paying for all the, the rent, all the bills and everything, and uh, let her focus in on, on what she really wants to do. You know, with, with her not working, I'm, I'm bearing the, um, the weight of, of the finances. Um, and it's, it's starting to become a burden, and things have gotten a little cold, a little distant. Um, you know, she spends a lot of time out in the evenings now. I mean, there are times that after we're done shooting a show, and, you know, I get home at 2 or 3 in the morning, she's not there. Uh, whenever she does come home, um, you know, she's out with her friends, which is unusual. She doesn't generally go out with too many of her friends. All of her friends are married. I just have a weird feeling from working on the show. I see a lot of different signs, and I see a lot of people who just have a feeling, and generally their feeling is right. I just never really thought that I would ever be in the position that I am now, having to use 
um, my friends and colleagues that I work with to uh, help me out on such a personal issue. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Suspect's identity withheld. Age 29. A prospective spouse suspected of setting up house with someone other than her groomsman. Investigation day two. Once background data has been accrued, cheaters' operatives converge outside the apartment Tony shares with his fiancée. Hours into the stakeout, agents notice a car slowly driving through the parking lot and pulling into an empty spot. The unknown male driver exits his vehicle and walks to the suspect's apartment door. After knocking, the door opens. Tony's girlfriend, whose identity is withheld, hugs the gentleman caller before ushering him inside. A short time later, the couple emerge, arms entwined, and depart the dark complex. After a brief pursuit, the duo arrive at a nearby eatery. Chivalry is on the menu as the suspect's date escorts her into the restaurant for a fine night of dining. Almost two hours pass before the pair appear and return to the suspect's abode. As the date ends, cheaters' agents catch a break, spotting the suspect enjoying her goodnight kiss before entering her apartment alone. The dejected companion is treated to a tease as the suspect reopens the door and exposes her heartfelt thanks for dinner. With a nudge towards his car, the male escort departs and his tantalizing date returns to the confines of her home. Investigation Day 6. Cheater sentries remain vigilant outside the suspect's residence. Their persistence is rewarded. They identify Tony's girlfriend leaving her home and making tracks to a nearby pool hall. Ground agents equipped with pocket cams infiltrate the establishment and soon zero in on their subject. The subject takes a cue from the animal kingdom, flaunting her desires on a nearby pool table. Her suitor from the previous day of investigation, now identified as Major Croft, is helpless to resist her siren call. Soon the couple foregoes their game to concentrate on each other in an ostentatious display of affection. With her evening's festivities ended, the suspect eases tensions with Tony in this recorded phone conversation. Established, the operation continues as agents take note of Tony's departure. The suspect waves goodbye to her devoted supporter before she vanishes behind closed doors. Half an hour later, Croft arrives and is covertly covered by the external team. Croft continues to Tony's apartment where a scantily clad suspect beckons him in. The internal surveillance cameras placed by Tony spark to life as the carnal couple make themselves comfortable. With a cocktail in one hand and the suspect in the other, Croft seems to enjoy his king of the castle status. The suspect displays her affection by writhing atop of Croft, setting the mood for the night. Ready for another drink, Croft asks his lady for a top-off while he shuffles through Tony's CD collection. The good times roll from the couch to the bedroom, leaving investigators with the unpleasant task of informing Tony of his fiancée's treachery. Coming up, the confrontation. With his girlfriend's blatant betrayal captured on tape, Cheaters has no other option but to disclose the information. 
Troubled by the inescapable evidence, Tony takes a ride towards the truth. Tony, thanks for being with us. No, ma'am. Are you ready to take a look at what we have? Not really, but, but yeah. All right. Tony, this evening was on a night that we were working. No. We had a crew call. One particular vehicle pulls up, yeah. gentleman gets out, goes right to the door of your place. That is my place. Greets him. They get in his car. We're followed to a restaurant. Once there, we can get a better view of the two of them right before they get into the restaurant. Sure. After dinner, he drops her off. And there's an embrace kiss at the door. It seems that he'd like to go in. She won't let him. She closes the door, but a moment or two later, the door reopens, and she's there, dressed a little more provocatively. She still doesn't allow him to enter. They embrace, spend a few more intimate moments with one another before she goes in and he leaves. Based on the information that we now had, this was the time that we had you place the hidden cameras nope. inside. On this evening, as we've seen before, you're on your way to work. She walks you out to the car. You leave not very long after that. It gets a visit from the same gentleman nope. that we've seen previously. Uh -huh. Once inside, our motion-sensitive cameras picked up this activity, and I don't think it's necessary to describe what you see from here. No. Tony, a lot of what we've seen takes place when you leave for work. No. Tonight, mm -hmm. you told that you were going to work again. Yep. We've had detectives that were stationed at your place. Mm -hmm. I want to call them now and find out. Sure. Hey, what are we looking at? He showed up. Mm -hmm. He brought some takeout. How long has he been there? He's been there about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. All right. We're just a few minutes away. All right. You know, you, you can always, you can always talk to me and tell me that 
working out. That's fine. Wait, uh, you could have left. What am I supposed to say? Oh, I can't God. just leave. What am I supposed to go? I don't care. Anywhere to get my, me out of here. No. I don't have anywhere to go. I what am care. I supposed to do? I, I don't get it. What? what am I? Baby, stop. Wait. Wait. Stop. Wait, what? Wait. No. What the? I'm getting. What do you want to take? What do you want to take with you? You tell me. I give you the option. What do you want me to? You know, that always look going. Take that. Just there. Just where take am I go? I don't where care I? where you go. It's not my problem. Y'all get out of here, damn! Please. Go. What the? What the? Why, why are you surprised? I told you a hundred times. I work for the show. Well, don't frown on me. Well, wait a minute. Come. Just hold on. Just calm down. Hey, but were you gonna take me home with you? Oh hell no! Hell Let's no. Hey, you got No nah, man, you are supposed to be be with me. We get with this guy. Y'all been together for what a year and a half. And but it's over. You about to get mad? It wasn't no. over. He still lives here. Yeah, it, oh, it's God. over now. I can't even. I don't know where the keys at. I can't even. Did you like his? Please. Did you like his? Was it? it ain't about that. Really? Because I oh saw the surveillance and it seemed like you didn't like it. Oh my god. Baby, it's not about that. I swear on everything, it's not really? about that. I just, what am I supposed to do? I don't, you ain't ever home no more. I know, because I'm You don't working. love me? Yeah, you go at work and then you go out drink with all, I guess these mother That is here. something that I That's who you go no, drink with. That's what I get to do because well, I you know, no. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. Fine, you know what? Then leave. Then, I'm going to cops on you and I'm going to cut that shit all my life. My name you is on the... I'm fine. Get out of my face. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You know, Call. You know what? You know, you know, you know, you know, sorry. You. Yeah, you mother. Get the out of my face. Go somewhere. Okay, and I brought us some roses, man. We were just eating. We were sitting down watching this movie on HBO. So this has been going on for quite a few a few so weeks, much, man. What are y'all going to do? Follow me where I go? Thanks, guys. Um, sorry that you know you had to go through this. So, you know. Are right, you gonna be okay tonight? Yeah, I'm gonna be fine, man. All right, guys, let's go. You guys take care. Thanks. After the confrontation, Tony keeps calm while deciding which path to travel. Stay tuned as we unveil his final reaction. But now, Angela Potter returns to expand on her experience when she busted her boyfriend on cheaters. Angela Potter, age 39. A previous client reminisces about the night her boyfriend was caught with his hands full of another woman. First, I couldn't believe it, you know, but um, it had already been signs that I knew he was doing something, so I just, my gut feeling kept telling me. They actually told me that they had him somewhere with a female. Anger took over, because he always tried to make me look stupid, like it was my fault. I, mean, I actually saw him and kind of verified what I'd already been feeling. What's what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, no. I thought you were supposed to be at work. I am working. Why are you working? With what? With what? What are you doing? I was just, yo, we was meeting to do the... Uh, to do what? We was working on... To do what? What are you doing? What is this? What is this? Hey, I was trying to... She just... Look, I came here to just ram her... I don't want to hear you. You're supposed to be way at Addison. You're supposed to be working. You went with panties in your hand? It was just unbelievable how he just... His character had just switched from what I knew into what I saw. If I wouldn't have seen it and someone would have told me, I would not have believed he would be in a lingerie store buying panties for a female. You know, they were all out of the mall and that type of thing. Because he always just seemed like a hard-working, dedicated guy to what he does. And you know, when he tells me he's at work, that's what I seem to think. So I was just told that this, it was just disbelievable. You didn't have to lie. You, that's all you do is lie. Everything you say is a Lie. I have to have just you because I can't have them filming in the store. Uh, what they have to do with me? I'm a paying customer. I, That's what I'm saying. So you're denying my money you. for them running them and her on me? I would like to purchase my penny, please. Thank we you. We all have to know. Why are you
you gonna run? Why you gonna run? Why you gonna run? Why you gonna run? Why you running? I hope he grows up, knows how to be a man, be more respectful, um, be respectful of people's feelings, and you know, like I always said, my favorite words are, mouth can say anything, you know, and it's just actions should back everything up. Just hope he just stops preying on people's feelings, learns how to be more of a man. With a confrontation of memory, Tony Pater has started to concentrate on the future, as opposed to dwelling on the past. Tony says, to go through something like this with someone who's supposed to be your soulmate, you don't come out the same. As for her culpability, the suspect is defiant when pressed about her affair. She tells Cheater's producers through an email, Tony was great, but boring. I needed excitement and fun. I got what I wanted. I'm free. Major Croft apologizes to Tony, stating that he knows what it's like to be cheated on. If he'd known the suspect was involved with someone, he never would have pursued her. Remember, if you don't get your programming from Goldstein's, why we'll both lose money. <laughs> <laughs>